A question I get all the time is how to build APIs in Next.js. So we're gonna take a look at some code and some examples and walk through this guide that I've created. So if you've ever wondered, can I build APIs only with Next.js? Is it a good fit for that? How do I work with the request, with the response? How do I actually get it deployed? All of that's gonna be covered in this guide and we're gonna talk through everything here. So to get started with Next.js 15.2, we've actually just released a much simplified version of Create Next App that allows you to build a new app API only. So there's actually no pages, no UI components that get included in the starting point. You can of course upgrade to that later, but to get started, it's just API endpoints or route handlers. Now, for those of you who have been around for a while in the Next.js ecosystem, you might have heard us talk about API routes in the pages router. These were built on the Node.js request and response objects which is kind of like Express, you've used that before. But in the app router, we instead changed to use the web APIs. So the web standard request and response, and we changed the terminology a little bit to route handlers. A route handler is kind of the lowest level of abstraction. So you can think about the page file that actually renders a React component. That's basically another layer on top of a route handler. It is handling a route, but it's just also producing some UI. Um, generally, even if you're using the pages router, we recommend starting to incrementally adopt the app router and route handlers for APIs because it's using the web request and response APIs, which if you haven't looked at the code before, that's pretty nice. You know, you've probably seen a web request and a web response somewhere else in your coding journey. Maybe you've used it in other frameworks. They're pretty nice APIs to work with and they still work when deployed in Node.js like environments. So when should you build your API with Next.js? I would say the most common case I see is when a team is using Next.js for their front end, for their UI, but then they also have multiple clients. So they've already built their data layer inside of their Next.js app where they're talking to their database or where they have all of that business logic. And then they wanna consume that in another place through some kind of public API. And they're choosing to do that from their Next.js application. That's one case we've seen. Another is when they're building an existing proxy to a backend. So inside of their app, they need to talk to a REST API or a GraphQL API or something else that they've already built. Next.js can essentially help you securely connect to that API. You probably wanna use secrets or some kind of bear token or auth token to talk to this API, which probably can't run on the client. So you need some middle layer between your front end code, your browser code, and that API. And that's where this kind of back end for front end or proxy architecture comes in. Uh, maybe you're listening to webhooks from something like a Stripe, or maybe you're trying to do some kind of custom authentication thing where you want some of that logic to live on the server. All of that good fits for building APIs in Next.js. So the most basic API you can define anywhere inside of the app router or the app directory using this route.ts file. It does not have to be under the API folder, but typically if you want that URL structure slash API slash whatever, you would nest it inside of that directory. So for example, uh, I have all the code that I talked through in this post here. So app API users and then route, we have this function uh, which is the get method. So it corresponds with actually requesting this in the browser. We have some hard-coded data for the users and then we're returning a response. So we take in the web request and then we produce this response and we're just returning a JSON response here with whatever status code we want and we could also forward along any headers we want. For the savvy eye, you might also know there's a response.json, which you can also use, but I wanted to show the most explicit version of this here. And of course, this is an async function, so you can go to your database, you can handle authentication, you can do all sorts of things inside of this route. As you saw in that file, it's not just gets, you can also do posts or deletes or patches or all different types of HTTP methods inside of that file, which is kind of nice versus having to have separate files for each one. You can just co-locate those different functions and it depends on the name of the function. So you actually export get and export post, that's how it's able to recognize the different methods that you're using. For example, I took that code I had locally, I went ahead and deployed it and I accessed 
slash API slash users in the browser. This is a Git request and I get back that response. Like I mentioned, the APIs use the web request and response APIs. So anything you can find on MDN or in your favorite AI chatbot about how to use the web request API applies here as well or any other resources you see online. So that's very helpful. And that means that any way you would access things like query parameters or headers or cookies, you can do all of that using the familiar API surface area. Now we also have a layer of abstraction on top of the web request and response APIs that include some common utilities that you might need to use. Maybe it simplifies getting the query parameters, for example, or the URL search parameters. Uh, maybe it simplifies how you read headers and cookies, especially with these functions that under the hood are using Node.js async local storage. That means that you can access this in any part of the server side code in your Next.js application. So maybe that's middleware, maybe that's in a server component. You can have that data access layer like we talked about that implements these functions that can reuse that logic in multiple different places. But just a couple examples here of different ways you can access that information from those different uh, parts of the incoming request, cookies and headers and URL search params. Um, you can also, just like generally with routing inside of Next.js for page and UI parts, you can create dynamic route segments or dynamic paths or your APIs as well. So for example, I have slash API slash users slash ID, IDs in brackets. So it's the dynamic part of this URL. And then I have some route and kind of just like this other route here where we were taking in a request and producing a response, we can do the same thing here. In this instance, I'm using that abstraction of next request, and I could also use next response if I wanted to. We get access to the params, and the params are going to be whatever's included here in that file name convention or that folder convention. So we know that it's ID. We await the params as of Next.js 15, and we get the ID. And we can then take that ID, again, call our database, or use that to look up some information, and then return some response back. And this is another example of co-locating the get method as well as a delete method inside of the same file. So pretty nice little helpful feature there. Um, another thing I briefly talked about at the beginning was using Next.js as a proxy or forwarding layer. So let's say you have this separate REST API or this separate backend somewhere else. And really you just need to make a request through the Next.js server essentially to go to this other location you can do that through Next.js API routes or route handlers, or just that server-side logic inside of Next.js. Um, I like that some people refer to this as a backend for front-end or a BFF, just kind of sounds fun. Uh, another question I saw pretty often on Reddit, so shout out to Reddit, are people asking about how to build kind of shared middleware in the express terminology of middleware logic. Uh, for example, you might want to define your logic for handling authentication or authorization in one place and then have that function you can wrap the other parts of your APIs. So for example, you might have this with auth function where you're checking something on the cookies. Maybe you do some kind of cookie lookup to see if you already have a JWT or some kind of token. And if you don't, you can just return back a 401 um, with some kind of JSON. Otherwise, essentially continue on. Otherwise, in your route handler, we can say, okay, you've made it successfully into the next step. So notice we're still exporting the Git. It has to be named Git, so that's how Next.js knows to use that HTTP verb. But then we wrap the secret Git with, with auth, and that's our helper function here, our helper middleware that allows us to uh, kind of put that authentication logic in one place. To show a quick example, let's say we go to API slash secret and we see our error unauthorized as expected, but I go into DevTools and I add some fake token, which you would likely verify this token to check and make sure it's valid. But just the existence of that cookie here is allowing me to effectively do my fake authentication. Now let's talk about actually getting that API deployed and online. So by default, Next.js uses a Node.js server. So if you deploy it to Node.js hosting, if you deploy it to 
anywhere that supports a Docker container, you have the ability to use all server features, including APIs, but you could also do things like server components or other features on UI rendering. Another option that some folks do is a single page app or static export. This is gonna be more on the UI side, but it's helpful to know that route handlers can still be used kind of like APIs in this static export mode. So you can think about having maybe many different APIs where you can pre-render the contents of the API. So they don't change based on the request, but I could still access a route like slash API slash data, and that would be pre-rendered during a build, taken as a file that you can upload, like a JSON file, to your static hosting, maybe that's some CDN or some S3 bucket, that also still works in this environment. Now, for most people, when you're building APIs, you probably want dynamic request time information. So this is kind of a small caveat that most folks probably won't use. Um, and also, of course, you can deploy Next.js apps to Vercel. You can deploy APIs on Vercel. We have a, an entire guide that talks about deploying APIs, uh, including our new compute model, Fluid Compute, which is really great for APIs. If you haven't seen it, I can show a quick demo. Basically, if I send in a bunch of traffic to my application, Fluid Compute can send many different requests into one function. It's more cost effective, it's more optimized for these type of API or backend applications. And we keep a pre-warmed instance so you don't have cold starts. So some of the cons and trade-offs of serverless in the past don't apply with Fluid Compute. It's worth checking out. But yeah, we have a ton of details in this about the origin location, how you do failover and availability, how you can send soft caps and hard caps, real-time usage visibility. Uh, it's not just Next.js, you know, there's other frameworks as well if you're interested in that, including backend only frameworks and Python frameworks, how to debug, you know, how to connect to your AWS account with OIDC, all sorts of good stuff, you know, picking databases through our marketplace, whether it's Postgres or Redis uh, and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of stuff in here more than I can go into in this video, but if you're interested in that, check it out. Another thing that I saw a lot of folks on Reddit mention was how do I do rate limiting and how do I do cron jobs with my API? And just wanna mention the Vercel firewall does offer the ability to do programmatic rate limiting as well as the ability, we have cron jobs on the platform too. So if you're wanting to, to deploy to Vercel, definitely give that a shot. Now, a few more things to talk about. Sometimes you don't even need an API endpoint at all. If you're calling an API and a client component in the browser somewhere, it makes sense to have that separate API. But if you're doing some kind of server logic and you can just go directly to the server in a server component, that might make more sense for your use case. Unless you're trying to abstract this logic out and use it for multiple clients, which was one of the uh, use cases we talked about, then this would be something like, you know, await get user information. And that get user information call could also be used inside of a public API. So you can still have that one function that's kind of the source of truth, but rather than having the network request here or that additional kind of indirection, you can just go directly to the actual source of truth or the function inside of a server component. Now that doesn't fit for everyone, but that's an example that you can think about. So to kind of put a bow on this and wrap it all up, it's now much easier to create API-only Next.js apps. You have a lot of flexibility in how you define your APIs. You can do a bunch of different HTTP methods inside of the same file. You can do dynamic paths. You have access to these web standard APIs like request and response. And we've tried to make it pretty easy to make APIs. It's not the right choice for everyone. And some of the backend only frameworks that are specifically designed for APIs have lots of really nice features so if that's what you're looking for, then maybe that's not the right fit for Next.js. But if you're like some of the people who have kind of fallen into this bucket that I described in the top, Next.js might be a good choice for you. Um, a few FAQs I want to mention. If you're you know, more experienced with Next.js and you know about server actions, you might be wondering the difference between those. You can kind of think about server actions like a auto-generated post API. So the post method inside of that route file, except you're not navigating to slash API slash users. Under the hood, Next.js is navigating to that route for you and it's encrypting that value. So random people can't just access those public endpoints. 
Um, now, if you want to use the same logic between a server action and a public API endpoint, you can. This is kind of similar as before. You're taking that function and you're moving it to a data layer in your app where you have all the logic where you talk to your database, you do auth n, auth z, and then you're just calling that function both in the server action as well as in the API. That's uh, an option you can cons um, consider using, or you can also just not use server actions and you can just continue to use a client-side data fetching solution like an SWR, which then can call these API endpoints in your application. Um, and I also saw a few questions. Yes, you can use TypeScript with route handlers. And we have a full doc on authentication that goes in much more detail, not only on the back end or back end for front end side, but on how you actually consume that in the front end. So this was a, this was a whirlwind run through of how to build APIs with Next.js. All of this code you can get started with very easily through create next app dash dash API. And I just went through and copied in some of the different code snippets from the blog post. This should give you a pretty decent overview of how to work with some of the features, including doing um, some of those kind of middleware-like pieces inside of your application. So if you try APIs on Next.js, let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear your feedback on other education you want to see in this kind of back-end space as well, because we primarily talk about front-end things. So kind of crossing the chasm here and talking a bit more about the network layer, I think is also pretty helpful. So let me know. Hope this was helpful. Peace.